every nation because this train is a clean train. You know this train. A clean train. Wouldn't have anything but a clean train. This is David. You're tuned to WPKN at 89.5 FM in Bridgeport, Connecticut. We've got a great show tonight. We're going to be talking about photography, my favorite subject. It's important. And uh, we've got uh, in the studio Adger, Adger, who is a uh, world-renowned photographer, poet, artist, painter, um, and um, Michelle Agin, I think that's what Agins, who's a, a New York Times photographer. We're going to be talking about their friend and uh, mentor and uh well, I'm going to let them talk about who uh, Don Hogan Charles is. So if I bring up uh, Adger and Dolly, say hello, Dolly. Hold Hi, on. Everybody. There we go. And then I think, hold on a second, let's get uh, Michelle in here if I can figure out where she is hiding on the board. Michelle, are you there? I'm here. All, all, all right. All right. We're here. We're all here. And we're all going to be talking about uh, Don Hogan Charles. And uh, Adger, do you want to start a little bit about uh, Don and, and who he who he was in your in, in your sphere of uh, the world? Um, well, yes, Don, uh, I met Don in the early 60s and we were both photographers and I was in this place, um, I forget where it was, but anyway, some news situation, but I wasn't big on news, I was into something else, but <clears throat> I recognized him in the room, you know, as the only other black photographer. And I went over and, you know, we started talking and he was very reserved and very like, you know, standoffish, you know, he looked at me and he saw that I had professional equipment. So he knew, you know, I'd been hired by somebody, you know, <laughs> to do this work and he was there. So there was a little, you know, looking at each other. Later on, we started talking about, you know, photography and African-American photographers. And I hadn't seen anybody on the scene like that. And he told me he hadn't seen anybody like that, like me on the scene. So then we started talking and then so what, having what, what year are you talking? What talk, what um, year like 1964, 65. Right. And he was a an ebony photographer at that point? No, I think he, in 64, he had just been hired by the New York Times. Right, 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 right. You know, and at that time, that was really unheard of. Um, there were no African American photographers other than Gordon Parks that everybody knew that was working in a major uh, situation like that. And Michelle, are you back there? I'm here. Michelle, so th you weren't even born yet. Oh, well, yeah, you were, but. <laughs> I was born in 1953. That's what I'm talking about. He's talking about when you were <laughs> nine years old or something. But you didn't join up with the Times till uh, 1989. All oh, right, 89. So yeah. by that time, I could see where Adger and Don, who I didn't know, but Adger I know pretty well, were, were sort of um, in the same space, and there were only two black men there. Then they were both very skilled, so I can see where they could uh, ruffle a couple of feathers of each other till they became <laughs> friends. <laughs> right. But Adger was just saying that Don did something very different than what Adger was trying to do. Well, we had discussions, you know, um, about art or documentation. And to me, um, I wasn't interested in news photography. I felt that was a job and you were doing something for somebody. I was more interested wow. in personal expression, you know, but I realized that, you know, you had to make a living. But Don was dedicated to what he was doing. And that's what I respected. You know, he really was coming from a uh, black man's point of view and feeling but as a documentarian you know that was very difficult to do back then he had great pictures i mean the picture of adam clayton powell walking down the street with the kids holding on so it's a fantastic picture the vantage point you know of martin luther king's funeral just just terrific his his intimacy with documentation i think was uh, just fantastic and i think that he as far as I'm concerned, I can't hardly hear. I say, at all. I say, I think it. As far as I'm concerned, uh, he, Don, he was he dressed all the time. He always had a suit and tie on or a sport jacket, and his Nikon's, you know, uh, and one up under his coat and one over his shoulder. But he was always very, um, how do you say? He was somebody to reckon. He was a big guy, 
you know, but he was also a very sweet person once you got to know him. But he was well, very. You left out the pipe. Hmm? The pipe. That's what I said. He's always had. A, he always had a pipe. Oh, I heard you say he's always yeah. dressed. Yeah, he was always Nicely. dressed. He, yeah, he always had a pipe. He had a whole collection of pipes. We talked about pipes, and we talked a lot about you know. He said, "Well, you know, Gordon smokes a pipe." I said, "Yeah." He said, "It's cool." I said, "Yeah, I, I used to smoke a pipe." I said, "But I got away from smoking all that stuff." But we talked about pipes and where they came from, and you know, he was very um, like most retirees, very detail oriented. Yeah. So what do you think, Michelle? Because you got some. Uh, we tr- get some. Tr- well, I came. I came. I came as the as a young person on the staff in '89. So, um, but I I had the really the pleasure of meeting him when I was working in Chicago. I was raised in Chicago, and I met him uh, uh, just prior to when I was a copy girl at the Chicago uh, Daily News, and uh, uh, I got to uh, hang out with him. Uh, around at the old uh, New York Times building, uh, they had a, 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 a bureau in Chicago, and I'd go over there and visit him. And um, oh God, the other other photo editor, one of the um, the editors, and I'd go over there and hang out and, and hang out with Don and uh, can't think of the guy's name right now. But uh, that's when I first met him, you know. I, and uh, I told him I was going to be a photojournalist. <laughs> he would say, "Oh, okay." You know, he said, "Okay, what are, you, what, are you, what are you shooting with?" And I told him what I was what I was shooting with, which was a Nikon F. You know, and I said, "But I have a Leica in layaway." He said, "Oh," <laughs> and that he said, "That's high cotton." <laughs> 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 but you told me, or you said that he was once he real. Uh, he was pretty protective of you. Oh yeah, when I came to work for the New York Times and. Uh, I bought my first uh, house here uh, in Brooklyn. Uh, he was he was always helpful with you know uh, with the, what to do and what not to do in terms of how to fix things around the house. Also, he was he taught me. He said he said I don't like the way you you carry your camera. Carry it on the inside. He tell, he tell me twist it around. He said that way you have your body is always in control. And nobody can snatch it. Because oh. I, I was mugged when I first came to the paper. Mm. And so he said, he said, let me tell you something. Let me, let me show you how to wrap your, 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 uh, your, your, uh, strap around your hand. So when you're out there, you know, so you can never lose your, nobody can ever take control of your camera. You always have control of your camera. So he was, he was really, he, you know, he, um, he, he, Got me into the a photo vest thing, you know, wearing the photo vest. Uh, it's just it was so much, you know, mm-hmm. little things, but but really big things that when you're working in this profession. So you could see how he wouldn't be doing that with Adger because they were contemporaries, both men. They got the man thing going on there. They're <laughs> the same age, probably. Both of them really yeah. skilled, you know, on top level uh, respect and to. I mean, let's be honest. It wasn't easy being black in America. I was alive then. I I went to NYU in the um, I'm trying to think '60s. I took my master's degree. I I just remember how difficult it all was. And I'm white, you know, so I didn't have to deal with that. But I was very aware of it. So my mom, yeah. my mother taught on a hundred taught high school on 139th Street, Brook, Brook yeah, Willis Avenue Bridge. Was like at the uh-huh. time it was all Spanish. Wow! At, at that time, that was all Spanish, and my mom she chose to. to she didn't speak Spanish, but she chose it. She dedicated mm-hmm. to it. Pretty interesting. It was a pretty rough neighborhood. Hmm. She had bullet holes all over her car. She used to keep her car outside, you know, on the street. Well, that's we. Wow. That's where you kept your car. Where are you going to keep your but car? But she wasn't a New York Times photographer. No. So I can imagine it wasn't easy for you. Well, or, you know, you know, that's the other thing Don would do. Okay, he said, he said, Let, you know, he was the one who who showed you how to put the proper chain on your trunk, you mm-hmm. know, to protect mm-hmm. your gear. So he says, don't, he says, you see the way that this guy has his? He says, that's not right. So he knew the right... He, 
he did it the right way. This way, he says, it's a double chain, and you double lock it, and then you put the, then you put the lock on it. See I said, the, okay, John. <laughs> see all the stuff I missed? I, 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 do not, I did not know about putting a chain on your trunk. But I oh, that, that, they take the whole, they, they take the trunk out, and they put metal all through the trunk. Right. So they can't come through the back seat. Right. And this is because they wanted your camera equipment? Oh, yeah. Oh. oh, yeah. Well, I do remember that with the television equipment. We always took it in when we went to eat. We always took everything with us. We never left right. it out of our sight. Well, they would have to take the whole car uh -huh. the way Don had fixed, the way he had engineered the way the truck Glock supposed to, you know, for those who let him do it. Well, he, he was, was also an, he was an engineer, wasn't he? Oh, by that's training? right. Yeah. So he knew the ways of mechanics. I and that. He was an engineer. Yeah. So, so did, it, d during his career at the New York Times, he was most well known as a civil rights photographer. Like, though he took those remarkable pictures of Malcolm X and Coretta Scott King um, and yeah. and many others. Did, the, did mm -hmm. the New York Times utilize him? I mean, he was a general purpose photographer, too. He would go out and do uh, political things, other, other types of of uh, um, jobs, yeah, just like pretty much like me. I was general. I'm, I did everything. I did sports, spot news. I did. Um, I did. I was in Haiti. I did a, a lot of you know. But that was the way of the of the New York Times. They wanted you to do everything. Right, right, right. You know, they you know just you know in the last few years people started specializing. You know, but we had we were news photographers, so. Whatever came up on our shift is what we were expected to do, mm -hmm. which I still have to do. <laughs> How many people do you have? Huh? How many people, like, are in the group of people that work with you that get sent out? Well, all the staffers who work on or who work on New York Times staff are, that's really a prerequisite. You must be a news photographer. You know, you know, you must, you know, whatever comes up, you should pay, you should be able to cover a, a fire as well as uh, Fashion Week. Uh, you, you can cover, uh, well, a lot, of them, a lot of them didn't cover sports, but I covered sports. I covered baseball, hockey, you know. And um, so pretty much whatever, whatever came up, you were expected to do that. So getting back, getting back to Don, what were his specialties? And how, well, he, he, did, he did a lot of the, uh, in the latter years, he did a lot of the general assignments. Uh, like he did uh, the Fashion Week. He did. Uh, he loved Fashion Week. He loved. He loved dining assignments, where he had to set up all the really nice uh, pictures for the dining section. And he loved the theater and, and cultural assignments. You know, but boy, let something break in the streets right in front of him. It was like. He, it was like a, he was like a kid. He, that, it, it just sparked him. That's you know? where he shone. That's where he shined. Yes. Where are you at right now, Michelle? In terms of your job there at the Times, you still doing the uh, same? I'm I'm coming up on 29 years on June 19th. Oh, I see. Yep, and I'm still one of the the staff photographers at the New York Times full time staff. So you're based out of New York City. Are you mostly in New York, or do they send you out? They send you wherever they want to send you at really? any given time. Yeah. So it's really hard to hold down a family life. It was for me at that time, running around well, all over the world. Most of us don't have families. Or, yeah, I can hear so, that. Right. Yeah. He didn't have a family. Right. Immediate family, it says in this. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard. Adja had a couple of kids here and there. So that does yeah. <laughs> So that makes it hard because you're going to be sent all over the place, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Well, I like the uh, fact it says in his obituary that he he took the scenes, the street scenes of the black neighborhoods, and that yes, that that, that was the only the white people really didn't do that. They didn't go in those neighborhoods. They stayed clear of it, the way I remember. Uh, yeah, but New York Times. People were a little bit. It's a different animal, right? You no, know, you were, of course. You were expected to go above and beyond it. And in a lot of cases, the New York Times photographer, you know, when they they heard that you were coming, they pretty much opened the doors. But there were a couple of occasions that uh, 
they they embarrassed Don because they didn't believe that he was really from the New York Times. Right. And boy, oh boy, did the New York Times light those people up that that denied, you know, uh, him mm-hmm. access because they didn't think he was actually a New York Times photographer. Mm-hmm. But don't you all carry credentials? That's obvious. They so wear it on you. I was, I was, I was. Uh, when I first came to New York, I was sent to Tiffany's, and because uh, Bill Cunningham couldn't make an assignment at t- at Tiffany's, so I showed up with my new credential, my New York Times, really dressed nicely at Tiffany's to photograph something that Bill Cunningham was supposed to do, and the lady had the security escort me out. Yeah, I know. I know, all the New York Times, I know all New York Times photographers. You are not one. Wow. Of course, I got a big apology later, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, I've heard all that kind of talk. You know, it's and really... we're not we're not talking 1960. We're not talking 1950. We're talking 1990. 1989. Right, right. Yeah, right. it's terrible. Really, so sorry that people have to be treated like that and we're kind of sliding too right now <laughs> once again yeah but the long arm of the new york times correct makes some uh, corrections that's or, good as a fist oh it's a, it's a, and it did and and they they apologized to don uh I, I i forgot the uh, the instance but they did not believe he was a new york times photographer and they they turned him away or didn't allow him access and boy oh boy did the, did the paper light him up for it? I mean, they 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 knew Don Hogan and Charles's name after that. It's a it's a case where the where the newspapers are the one of the strongest um, supporters in in and um, maintainers of democracy. Yeah. So what what I was trying to say is, well, no, I didn't and, get off. And, that, you know, <laughs> I don't know. 125th <laughs> Street was where you tell me was a beautiful place, right? You told me that. Adjun. Well, when I was coming up. Okay. And we would come to New York to visit my aunt and uncle. At Easter time, you know, we would drive down from the Bronx in his car and we would ride down 125th Street and everybody was dressed up. Black people back in the, you know, when I was coming up, you couldn't be seen in the street looking bad. You know, so on those holidays, um, people were dressed up. And and those days, it was mostly, it wasn't about junkies, it was more about winos. (laughs) But everybody was dressed up, everybody. And it was beautiful. I mean, that was the Harlem that I remember as a young kid, you know. But all all of that changed radically, you know. And I think after uh, Malcolm X came, you know, there was a lot of, like, um, we're not going to put up with this anymore, you know, attitude. And I think that that shot that Don took of of uh, Mal- <clears throat> Malcolm X looking out the window with the carbine put Malcolm, you know, as the everyday man. He wasn't Malcolm X, the hero. Anyway. He was a brother protecting his family. And that access that Donald got to that... Nobody else could have gotten that shot but him. Right. And it was beautiful, beautifully done, you know. It said a lot. It said more than any article could say. That's right. Because it, it stayed with people's... Uh, stayed, That's right. You know, you know, that's what makes photography such a valuable and important part of journalism because it's the pictures. That's right. That, that stay with us. Not the, the stories don't stay so much. Mm-hmm. That's why movies are so important, you know, when people put in their minds and the visual image. The visual image is very important because you remember it. So it's a- I love the I love the, I love what I loved about Don is he really taught you about detailed caption writing. Mm-hmm. He was really into making sure he had every name spelled correctly or he wouldn't leave the assignment. He made he drove a lot of PR people crazy because, you know, he was like, Wait a minute. I have to get every name correct. Right. And, and he, he would make them sit there until they did exactly what they were supposed to do. That's mm-hmm. what they were supposed to do. Detail. Here. Again, detail. That's yeah. detail. Yeah. yeah. Well, important so, detail. So right? detail mm-hmm. and his work detail and the way he dressed. Mm-hmm. He was very clean. He was always, the brother was always dressed. That's <laughs> nice. You're not different. 
Yeah. You're, you a sharp, you're, you're a sharp dresser, Roger. Roger, you work uh, on that, too. I'm, I'm very, um, I was bohemian. <laughs> yeah, you are a bit of bohemian. That's true. But that's how I know you through that. But um, <laughs> the guy sounds like he really took the job seriously. He put the work out, and it fulfilled him, so he didn't need family. Or he couldn't have a family and do that from what? Well, I, I don't think it was so much that as it was that I think... Don, he was aware of his destiny and he embraced it. You know, he didn't shy away from it. He knew that being the first there, he was going to have to put up with a lot of bullshit. Well, I'm sure he knew. But he also wanted to tell the truth. The truth, his truth, which is, you know, our truth, which is humanity's truth. You know, his pictures go beyond just being pictures of black people or black life. Exactly. They, they go beyond that. They go right to the heart of what great art is really all about. And I think that he was aware of that. I mean, on the talks that we used to have, you know, he was like, you know, I mean, he was a bear. He didn't let anybody push him around. <laughs> he he totally was black. Was a bear. You know, he he was, you know, he would get right up in your face you know, and tell you off. He didn't even like you. He, you know, he wasn't no little shy guy saying, I'm just so happy to be working for the time. He put them on notice all the time, you know, and that's who he was. So he put the times on notice. Oh, he put everybody on notice. Yeah. It didn't matter. He certainly did. And he, and he wanted Mr. Don Hogan Charles. He called Mr. Don Hogan. That's Charles. right. Really? That's right. They called That's him Mr. Right. Don. Saying, hey, how come he took that name? Because it says in the obituary that it was not really his name. His name was Daniel. And um, well, that that was that was one of his. How many names did he have? He had. Yeah. yeah. Oh God. It, it, it was a. It was a whole. Okay. It. It was. I he want, was born. Daniel. James, uh, he had the name James in his name. Yeah. The, the Hogan yeah, sounds he, like a family name that he picked up and put it into his, his name, fam, part of it. Family. So he had a thing with names. Well, well, he was baptized Daniel James Anthony George Hogan Charles. Really? That's <laughs> evangelist uh, oh, Roman wow. Catholic Church. That's some black people. <laughs> wow. What's what okay. church? Mm -hmm. Black People's Church? What was it? No, I, I said, well, that's it was, a very was, black thing. Was, All them names meant really? something. You know, they were important names, either family names or names of heroes, you know, in the, in the black world because, you know, black people did that. I mean, and I had so a cousin named basically, Ulysses yeah, his, Simpson his Grant His family Bunch. were immigrants from the, from the Caribbean, and right. they were, they were um, allowed to come into the, the evangelist church uh, at that time. Welcome, rather. Mm -hmm. Not allowed. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Well, we got a lot of names like that. You have a lot of choices. You get seven yep. names. <laughs> you can choose three of them and use them. And then if you don't, you want to change your persona a little bit. <laughs> just choose a couple more of the names. Right. Um, I like what you all are saying, though. I like the fact that the guy was, uh, he meant business. And he, oh, knew yeah, what he, he, wanted, he knew what he wanted to do. And that's what he right. did. All right. You got to hand him that. Adger felt terrible about two weeks ago when uh, Dave Schwartz, our our here our main guy here who engineers the show, he said to me, um, "We lost this black photographer." And because David likes looking at the obituaries, and they are interesting. And I asked Adger the next day because Adger's got the same forty years. He's been working the same forty, sort of overlapping from the sixties to now. And I said, did uh -huh. you know him? And it caught Adger by surprise because he didn't know that he had passed. And you got upset. Mm. Adger got upset because. Yeah, because I had been to see him when, yeah. he, when he retired, you know, and he had the house up there. I was 114th Street or 12, somewhere up there. Anyway, and I went by and, and we spent the whole day together, you know, looking through a lot of his stuff and talking about photography and life and how we had chosen oh. this destiny and what it meant and everything. I mean, we just had a great time. I said, I'm going to come back and see you, man. We talk some more. You know, I took a couple of shots. I took a couple of shots of me. You know, I said, yo, dog, yo, old dog. You know what I mean? <laughs> we just exactly. had fun. You know, we just had fun. It was really, I was really glad to see him, you know, because uh, we had been in the trenches together and uh, it 
meant something at that time to be a photographer, first of all. Forget about being black. Just being a photographer at that time was a big deal. Photographers were looked at as people who did important work. You know, but what I don't understand is when I remember these star. Adjo and Michelle, photographers, they were fighting about what it really was when I was involved in the 90s. Remember they had those lectures, is it art or is it commerce? Is, is photography commercial or is it art? Remember they were arguing all the time? Is it craft? Is it yeah, art? Right. What is it? They couldn't make up their mind. Museum of Modern Art was having these talks and... Well, it's journalism, isn't it? Isn't that somewhere well, in between? It, 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 yes, we're photojournalists. Photojournalists, and, and right. Michelle says she's... Listen. Photojournalism, pe photojournalism people, we're born. So, if we're 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 rare. We're as rare as a uh, a four leaf clover, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so I I believe that all photojournalists are born. You think they're born to so do it, huh? We're born to do it, and it's 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 beyond anything you can imagine. Our dedication to what we do when we're when we're doing it. It's like it's it's no, nobody can really understand. So that's why it's hard to keep people in your life because they're like, are you kidding me? You taking a camera out to dinner with us? <laughs> yeah, hey, in other words, you can get in some pretty dangerous situations, and you're always thinking and watching with your eyes at what's going on. You're always looking. Yeah. Well, it's an art and a craft. Well, there was just all these arguments for yeah. about 10 years, and then that stopped. They decided The it's... craft of photography is an art. That's right. Right. That's what it but is. It, but it's, tied it's, re it's really the purest form of of uh, of snatching life at its purest form. That's right. So you're a light snatcher. <laughs> life snatcher. Mm -hmm. Paint, painting with light. That's yeah. exactly where I'm going. Mm -hmm. I paint with light. Mm -hmm. So did 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 um, Don Hogan Charles do exhibitions and he did did he do galleries and that sort of thing? Nope. nope. No. Well, we no. did. We he did. He did something when he uh, when he retired. When he retired, we did a small yeah. exhibit, a little small exhibit at the um, at a little restaurant on Fiftieth Street and Tenth Avenue. I can't mm -hmm. think of the name of it. A Druid, Druid. That was. Mm -hmm. And what 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 and, what uh, was the show about? Was it about his photojournalism? Was it about? Yeah, it was his, his photo his work his photo his work, journalistic yeah, right. work from uh, from Newark. To you know uh, what happened in the South, uh, to a lot of the 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 stuff with Robert Kennedy, the the the, the normal you know beat with covering you know politics in New mm -hmm. York. The shot um, with all Lindsay the is a great shot too. The shot with Lynn, Mayor Lindsay. With Mayor Lindsay. I'm yeah. trying to figure out who owns all this work. If you're working for the New York Times. Well, well if you work for the New York Times, that's exactly, you just answered it. Yeah, they well, own it. Because I'm trying to think where all this work is now that he's passed. Where's all this? They got it. Print, it's, 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 they got it. It's, it's, a New York, it's, a New, it's a new book out, you know, about, um, about unpublished work. And it just came out in December. Uh, um, these, yeah, well, really November uh, of this year of, of black of work um, um, in black communities that was never published. It's called unpublished, mm -hmm. and it's by you know, and a lot of the work, a majority of the the book is dedicated to Don Hogan Charles. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. What's the name of the book? Un 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 unpublished. It's published by the New York Times. Yeah, yes, I'm also in there too. Yeah, those rascals—they wait for ten now to publish it, right, and make the money off of it. Mm. Well, yeah, okay. Edger's got a Edger's got Edger's got an attitude about it. Yeah, well, I, I, I've always had an always, attitude about these companies, you know, Ebony included, all of them. You know, yeah, oh, Mr. Mr. They, Johnson, you work really. for these people, and you don't own your work; they own it. You know, but you don't really get the right. I mean, that's why I never wanted to work for anybody. I was just, you know, and I got offered jobs, you know, in these different places, um, really good jobs, you know, staff jobs. But it wasn't something I wanted to do because I knew from working with Gordon Parks that they own it all. You don't have any rights to any of it. Nothing. Huh? Nothing. Just, nope. a, just a byline. Nothing. And when you go and you pass, 
they still make money on you unless you have some contract that you have a family. But, they, but you know, I'm going to tell you, they, they're they pretty good about, you know, sharing sharing the moment, you mm -hmm. know, uh, sharing those moments because they know that you created them. Yep. So I, I haven't had any time I need to do a show or had to get a uh, donate a piece to, like, the, the latest book uh, on uh, called Imphon, uh about black women photographers. I mean, the Times is very good about letting me use one of my p pictures uh, for the publication. Mm -hmm. well, times, the times have changed a little bit. Yeah. This, this is a subject I was bringing this back to me. You and my sister worked for ad companies after visual arts. They owned everything. She, she didn't even get a prototype of the design of whatever she was asked to do for them. You know, they. But you get a paycheck every week. Yeah, no, I got just insurance. remember you this. Got it goes back plans. years. You got all now. this other stuff. So when so when Don Char when Don when Don Charles was working for the New York Times, he was at the top of the he was at the he was at the, the peak of a peak of the profession. When he retired, yeah. did, did, did he change? Did his artwork change? Did his attitudes change? Did he try to do create in other ways or do photojournalism in other ways? No, he was, he was, he was photojournalism to the day he died. Right, right. So what happens to the work after he retired? I mean, is that... Is that... Well, it's, it's, it's in the archive. No, no, no. The the, the which archive? What archive? Oh, um, his personal. You mean his personal archive? Yes. You got to talk to his family about that. I don't know. His family has his work. Right, right. So, will we see any of that at some point? Will there be a a, a, a book, a book, I'm, or a I, gallery? I, have, I know. We don't have any idea. You'd have to talk. I have to no that. idea. I don't. I don't. I'm one, not in touch with. Them. Right. Yeah. There's some nieces and but, nephews. It says. But that but, wasn't in his in his world to do something like that because he was a photojournalist that worked for the New York Times. Yeah, he didn't care about all that stuff. Yeah. You know, you know, he, he was just cool about like looking for, you know, looking for how, how big his picture was going to be used or how well it was played and, you know, to make sure his agate was right, correct. Right, and the impact that it would make. Exactly. Yeah. It's very, it's fascinating. I'm, 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 I'm a great admirer of, of photographers because I think that they're, the, they, they, they would hopefully be the most honest form of journalism. But you know, and you, you hope that they are honest because they have tremendous impact. You know, that that picture of Malcolm X had a tremendous impact. You know, it. Yeah, John was John really. Uh, he, 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 I said. Hey Don, I just saw your this picture on a T-shirt when I first got to the paper. He went, "Where? Did you take a picture of it?" And I said, "I said I will take a picture of it." He said, "Yeah, go find out where that is." <laughs> I said, "It was." I said, "It was in Spike Lee's movie." He said, "Really?" <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to deal with that. I got somebody to deal with that, and it was dealt with because he he was like. He was mortified that they would just use his work without finding out who it belonged to. Yeah, it is pretty <laughs> bad, really. Right, right. And he was only, he's the only person that shot that picture. That's right. They took license to just put it on a shirt and then put it on yeah, a set. It was in the movie, in, in the movie Malcolm X. Oh, so uh -huh. you would think the New York Times would be after him, too. Or he got... Well, this was, that was Don Hogan's picture. Right, right, right. But it, That was his... It, yeah, I'm sure that the time did go for him too, but but not as much as Don would. You know, he, he had his right because <laughs> that was his own personal work. That's right. That's good. So he protects his he protects his work. I hope someone's protecting. I hope he's protecting his work now. Yeah, I would, I would love to well, see. Well, I I, th I I hope his relatives are. I hope so too, because it's a big issue. Yeah, and family has got yeah. so much going on in them that they don't always give it the amount of time. So, what's the legacy of uh, Don Charles today? You know, um, how shall we? How would he, how would he remember himself? What would he say about himself, or what, what would he say anything? I mean, he's a, a documentarian. Well, I don't think knowing he... Don, he would say, "You know, they were lucky to have me." <laughs> 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 good, that's good. He had a lot of respect for himself. Oh man, was he something? That's right. 
<laughs> well, they're lucky to have all of all of you photographers. I, I Michelle, know. you're quite an you're quite accomplished and uh, award winning. You've got a blue ribbon in photography. I know a, a Pulitzer. Is, and you're, yeah, I was part of a Pulitzer Prize team uh, for Race in America. We uh, all uh, did pieces on Race in America. It was a book done by the New York Times. Right, just absolutely um, the, the work that you've done, Charles and Adger, it's, it's all remarkable. we got to move on, and thank you for your uh, reminiscing about uh, uh, Mr. Charles. I, I really appreciate it. I've never met him. I'm never going to meet him, but I'm certainly going to be – I've certainly had an – his pictures have certainly had an impact on me and many other many other people too, like like yours. Oh, and, thank you. and thank you very much, Adger. Thank you, Dolly. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. it was really All interesting. Right. Thank you. Great. Thank you.